Good morning and so good to see all of you. We are blessed today to have with us Father John uh, Kovalchik. He is one of the priests in the OCA Church and he was with us to share yesterday uh, during the retreat about prison ministry to share with us some of the wisdom uh, that he has and the experiences that he had working with people who are incarcerated. So today he's giving the sermon. We're all ears. It's a blessing to have you with us, Father John. Please give us some of your wisdom. Thank you, Father Luke. It is a, a great joy for me to be in the Potomac at the very famous church, St. Peter and Paul Orthodox Church. The priest that's substituting for me in my church Father David Hester sends his greetings. Many years ago, he was ordained a priest at this, at this holy church. And I want to thank Father Luke for his gracious invitation. <clears throat> Being a parish priest and working at a prison, which is only 10 minutes up on Route 6, a state facility, SCI Waymark, has become one of the greatest blessings in my life. At first, I was a little bit nervous about doing prison ministry. Uh, I started out in 1986. The dean said, Father John, go there for one semester, and if you don't want to stay, we will pull you out. One semester became 35 years working in the prison. Dostoevsky, on the great Grand Inquisitor, says this, the secret of man's being is not only to live, but to have something to live for. We all have to have a great need for meaning in our lives. Meaning is very important. Important for us who are in church and just as important for someone who is incarcerated. The person in the prison who lives in brokenness and pain, my brothers and sisters in Christ, can be transformed. He doesn't have to remain broken. The person who's in prison is behind walls, sometimes in shackles, in prison because of his sins, crimes. People outside of the prison are in prison in their sins, are afraid to confess their sins, are afraid to come to Christ, and really pour out their heart and to embrace their brokenness. As Orthodox people, we are called not only to realize that we're broken, but as Father Luke reminded me last night, we are to embrace our brokenness. In the 50th Psalm, David, after committing adultery and murder, what is he says? A broken and contrite heart I will not despise. When you visit someone who is broken, what can you offer them? What is the gift that you can give them? The gift is yourself. Our Lord says in Matthew 25, 36, I was in prison and you visited me. He doesn't say I was in prison and you got me out. He says I was in prison and you visited me, you came to me. You gave me your time. 
The greatest gift that we have is time. And at the same time, taking inventory of our own time. There's two aspects of time. One is chronos, Greek word chronos, chronology. The day that you're born, the day that you get married, the day that you finish college. Chronos, the swiftness of time. The other word for time is kairos, sanctified time, holy time. We all entered into the Divine Liturgy this morning and Father Luke elevated the Gospel. And he said, Blessed is the Kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Signifying that all of us in church here this morning have entered into sanctified time, holy time. A reminder that we're on a journey. We're not just finishing liturgy and going home. But there's an existential aspect to our journey. We're heading for the kingdom of God. Did you know that? We're on a journey every day for the kingdom of God. And the liturgy on Sunday reminds us of that journey that we're on. The kingdom of God is not a place. It's more a person, and that person is Jesus Christ. If you know Jesus Christ, and you examine your life, and embrace your brokenness just like Jesus was on the cross, broken for our sins, we have to embrace our own brokenness, our own sins. Because the kingdom of God is a person, it is Jesus Christ. Very shortly, you'll be receiving Holy Communion. Name by name, you will give and approach the chalice, and you will give your name. You have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and your names are written in the Book of Life. Kairos, sanctified time. Great Lent, sanctified time. If you want to know where you are in relationship to Jesus Christ and Great Lent, see how you take serious Great Lent. Great Lent is a microcosm of our life and our existence. Sanctify time. If time was a commodity and it was on the stock market, people, people can buy time. It would sky, go through the index, and it would be tremendous. Go to the teller and say, I'm giving you $50,000. Give me 10 good years. See what they will say. No, can't give you, can give you, could deposit it, but I can't give you 10 good years. The pre-Lenten gospel, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world, but he loses his own soul? So we take inventory of our brokenness. The prison cell, my brothers and sisters in Christ, becomes a place of healing because they're doing time. They have a lot of time to study, a lot of time to think about their lives, and time to repent. St. Paul says where sin abounds, and there's a lot of sin in a state penitentiary, where sin abounds, the grace of God abounds that much more. I find the grace of God very present in the prison. When the thief was crucified on the cross, he was doing time with Jesus. He was on death row. He looked at Jesus and he says, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus spoke to the penitent thief and he said, Today, today, you will be with me in paradise. Jesus is the king of paradise. When he spoke to him and he told him these words, he embraced him. 
Who was the first person to enter paradise? It was the person on death row, the penitent thief. We remember Mary Magdalene. Who was Mary Magdalene? When we look at the Gospel of Mark 16, verse 9, it says, Jesus cast out seven demons from her. She was demonized. If we know anything about people who are demonized, possibly she came from a broken home. Maybe she was physically abused, sexually abused, emotionally abused. But she met and encountered the Messiah, Jesus. And he restored her, made her well restored her and made her well. And it was Mary Magdalene who came to the empty tomb. Someone who was broken, who came to Christ, who was made whole. You know that the first hospital experience for Mary Magdalene, she was rubbing her eyes. And she said to the gardener, if you have taken away the Lord, let me know who he is, wh where he is, and I will go to him. Crying. And Jesus speaks these words. Mary. She recognized him not with her eyes, but with her ears and her heart. So our relationship with Jesus Christ is to recognize him with our hearts and with our ears. The Master is calling us. We're on a journey, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. The world will tell you something else. Victor Frank, the psychologist, he saw illness and death apart from any transcendent reference without any enduring meaning or purpose. We have meaning and purpose in our life. If you have meaning and purpose and direction, you're blessed. This is why you're here. Since 1987, I've interviewed 8,500 forensic inmates. Forensic inmate is a person who wants to take their own life or take someone else's life. They've had a, an active psychosis, a break from reality. And I've, I've encountered three things that has happened to those poor individuals. One, they were physically abused by age five. Two, they were sexually abused by age five and emotionally abused. How beautiful it is to have your children singing the beautiful responses to divine liturgy. P.J. His theory on cognitive development, he says 95% of who you are happens in the first five years of life. Those poor souls that I interviewed were heading for the prison system and didn't realize it. What is my purpose? What is my direction? What is meaning to my life? We're dealing with a secular society, a post-Christian society. God bless you for being in church today. God bless you for being on this journey with your priest, heading to the empty tomb like Mary Magdalene was. God bless you for being and preparing yourself for Holy Week, for Good Friday, so that you can hear the words of the penitent thief, the broken penitent thief who was made whole. Today, you will be with me in paradise. There's many stories that I can tell you, but I'll just leave with this one short story that touched the very fiber of my existence as a priest. I was making rounds at the prison, and a typical correction officer has a big belly. Chewing tobacco. He looks like he maybe had a quarter keg of beer for breakfast. I'm making rounds and I see this correction officer 
His name is Savchuk. Sounds Slavic, Ukrainian. I approach him, and he has the prayer beads, the chotki. And he's saying the Jesus prayer. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. I made the sign of the cross and I said, can I sit next to you? He says, sure, I introduced myself. I says, I'm Father John. I'm part of the treatment team. I'm an Orthodox priest. You're an Orthodox Christian. He says, I am. I says, you're saying the Jesus prayer. You're not the typical correction officer. He says, I'll tell you my story, Father John. He says, I went to church with my wife, a beautiful Orthodox church like this. Not as beautiful, I take it back. But I didn't believe in Jesus Christ. I said, you didn't? He says, no. I went because my wife told me to go. We had a daughter, Mary. So it'd be good if you take Mary to church, show that you're a father. I would go. I'd make the sign of the cross, I'd kiss the icons, I'd light, lit the candles, but in my heart, I didn't believe in Jesus Christ. Didn't know him, didn't believe in him. Mary was diagnosed with cancer when she was eight years old. They called for the priest right as she was dying in her beautiful bedroom with teddy bears. Just imagine, holy icon. And the priest gave Mary Holy Communion, anointed her her little forehead, and said, Mary, don't be afraid. In a few minutes, you will see the face of Jesus. Don't be afraid. Mary looks at her father and looks at her priest and says, I'm not afraid, Father, as long as Jesus looks like, the face of Jesus looks like my Father's face. I will not be afraid. She closed her eyes and died. The Father knelt before her little body. And it was there in his brokenness he accepted Jesus Christ. Mary brought him to Jesus. And he told me, Father John, I'm going to spend the rest of my life, every moment that I have, saying the Jesus prayer. Because my daughter, on her deathbed, brought me to a spiritual awareness that I didn't have. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to Jesus Christ. God bless you on your journey to Pascha.